Pretty Woman, the modern-day Cinderella story, has captured audiences for decades. This iconic romantic comedy not only became an instant hit, but also left a lasting impact on the film industry. Under the sparkling surface of the movie, there are fascinating behind-the-scenes tales and little-known details that have often escaped the public eye. It is safe to say that the making of Pretty Woman is a story as compelling as the film itself. What was the wardrobe mistake that went unnoticed for years? And how did it contribute to the movie's enduring popularity? What unexpected challenges did they face during the movie's production? Join us as we find out why nobody caught this wardrobe mistake in Pretty Woman until years later. Number 48. The Dress in Red. Vivian strutted into that iconic opera scene in Pretty Woman, dressed to impress. But wasn't she supposed to be wearing black, not red? Marilyn Vance, the genius behind the costumes, had a stroke of brilliance. She knew that swapping black for red would turn heads and make jaws drop. So she whipped up three stunning dresses for that scene. And guess what? In the end, the red number stole the show, leaving everyone swooning over Vivian's unforgettable entrance. Number 47. Jokes on Scene. The scene where Edward surprises Vivian with diamonds, only to play a cheeky trick on her at the last minute. As Vivian reaches out to take the glittering gems, Edward suddenly pulls them back, snapping the box shut with a mischievous grin. Julia Roberts, caught off guard by the unexpected twist, couldn't help but burst into laughter. Director Gary Marshall loved it so much that he decided to keep it in the movie. What started as a simple joke between takes became a memorable scene that added an extra spark of magic to Pretty Woman, number 46, Lotus to the Rescue. In today's movies, you often spot all sorts of big name brands popping up left and right. But back in the early 1990s, that wasn't the norm. Take Pretty Woman, for example. The filmmakers wanted to feature some top-notch wheels, so they reached out to Ferrari and Porsche, thinking they'd jump at the chance for some prime screen time. Both companies said thanks, but no thanks. Because they didn't want their sleek rides associated with, well, let's just say, unconventional pickups. Nancy Gross with her trusty Lotus comes to the rescue. It may not have been a Ferrari or a Porsche, but hey, it got the job done and added a touch of unique flair to the movie. Number 45. Scenes that never made it. While making Pretty Woman, not all scenes made it to the final movie. Some were cut like the one where Vivian eats her fancy steak with ketchup from the packager and the scene where Edward almost gets into a fight with a gang. There was also a beautiful horse ride at sunset that didn't cut to think about what could have been. Number 44. Movie Fails. Isn't it fascinating how we catch those little blunders in movies that make us chuckle? Take Pretty Woman, for instance. You know that scene where Vivian unties Edward's tie, dashes off for a moment, and voila! His ties all neat again when she returns? Classic blooper. And let's not forget the hilarious switcheroo with the croissant turning into a pancake in the blink of an eye. Someone forgot to keep track of the details. These slip-ups might not be Oscar-worthy, but they sure do keep us entertained and on the lookout for more movie mishaps. Number 43, Jealous Partner. Robert's dog, a regular at the set, had an amusing quirk. He didn't approve of the love scenes between her and Gear. This led to multiple retakes of those scenes as his barking disrupted filming. It added a touch of humor and challenge to the set, showing that even furry friends can have strong opinions about movie romance. Number 42, Good Luck Charm. Gary Marshall, the mastermind behind Pretty Woman, considers Hector Alzando, the actor his lucky charm. Hector lands the role of the hotel manager, a pivotal part of the movie. But Disney Studios wasn't willing to pony up the cash Hector asked for. Not on Gary's watch. Determined not to lose his lucky charm, Gary dipped into his own pockets to make sure Hector got what he deserved. Fast forward to the movie's smashing success, Disney Studios suddenly had a change of heart. They realized they'd made a big mistake and coughed up the extra cash they owed Gary. Number 41, other actors and Richard Geary. Denzel Washington, Christopher Reeve, John Travolta, and Daniel Day-Lewis all vied for the coveted role. After the audition, none other than Richard Gere made it. 
handpicked by the casting director for his undeniable charm and charisma. But here's the twist. Behind the scenes, director Gary Marshall had his heart set on a different leading man, none other than the legendary Al Pacino, but he was too tied up with other projects to even consider the role. Number 40, body parts stealing the spotlight, Julia Roberts. In a scene with Richard Gere, just as things heat up, Julia's forehead decides to steal the spotlight with a stubborn vein making a grand appearance. It's so distracting that director Gary Marshall hits pause on the shoot. Marshall takes matters into his own hands and gives Julia's head a soothing massage until that pesky vein decides to take a back seat. Number 39, goat in fancy suit. Richard Gere's reaction when he was asked to play Edward Lewis in Pretty Woman wasn't exactly jumping for joy. He said you could dress a goat in a fine suit and send it out there, and it would do just fine. Now that's one way to keep it real. But in the end, Gear rocked that suit like nobody's business, proving that sometimes even a goat in a suit can steal the show. Number 38, Real Life Situations. Director Gary Marshall's struggle with hotel keys wasn't just a personal quirk, it inspired a clever twist in Pretty Woman. Recognizing the universal frustration, he gave Richard Gere's character the same difficulty, adding a relatable touch to the film. Number 37, I Love Lucy. In a charming scene from Pretty Woman, Vivian watches an episode of I Love Lucy on TV. Director Gary Marshall wanted to show Vivian enjoying something that the average person could relate to, adding a touch of everyday joy to her character's story. Number 36, tickling Julia to the right mood. Directors sure have a bag of tricks to ensure scenes go off without a hitch. Take that memorable moment in Pretty Woman when Vivian lounges on the floor watching I Love Lucy. It was one of those times when Gary Marshall, the director, needed to pull out all the stops to get the right vibe. So what did he do? He strolled over and started tickling Julia Roberts' feet. Number 35, bath pranks. Behind the scenes tale of the bubble bath scene in Pretty Woman. Julia Roberts, submerged in suds, ready to shoot the iconic bathtub moment. Gary Marshall, the mischievous director, decides to play a prank. He clears the set in a flash, leaving Julia's head bobbing alone in the bubbles when the cameras roll again. To keep those bubbles frothy and fabulous, the crew pours in so much soap that Julia's hair dye starts to run. With her hair turning into a rainbow cascade, they had to think fast and change the color on the spot. What a soak indeed. Number 34, shopping statements. Remember the shopping scene? Well, behind the scenes, the costume rules were as strict as can be, but how they worked their magic. While that iconic dress may have stolen the spotlight, there's another gem in the mix, a simple old red jacket that cost a mere $1.30. The costume crew snagged it from a street corner, turning a bargain find into a style statement fit for the silver screen. And speaking of silver screens, rumor has it there's talk of a movie within a movie. A night at the opera, perhaps? Who knows what dazzling ensembles await us next in the world of Edward and Vivian. Number 33, Museum Saves the Opera. The grandeur of the San Francisco Opera House, poised for its moment on the silver screen in Pretty Woman. But just when everything seemed set, an unexpected earthquake happened. With the original location out of commission, the director and producers had to think fast, and they settled on the History Museum next to USC, making a last-minute switch that saved the day. Number 32, Poster with a Fraud. Back in the 1990s, before Instagram filters and fancy CGI, Photoshop was the go-to tool for movie magic, and Pretty Woman has its fair share of Photoshop wizardry. Richard Gere's hair on the movie cover, it's as black as midnight, but if you peek inside the film, you'll see it's more of a distinguished gray. There's more. Julia Roberts' body on the cover? Well, that's a whole other story. You see, that picture-perfect figure wasn't even hers to begin with. It belonged to Shelley Michelle, Julia's body double for the movie. They pulled off the ultimate switcheroo by slapping Julia's head onto Shelley's body, creating a flawless illusion that had us all fooled. Number 31, Drew for the part. Drew Barrymore, the spunky teen sensation, wanted the role of Vivian in Pretty Woman. Turns out Drew felt a deep connection to the character. 
With her own struggles with drugs and the challenges she faced at such a tender age, Drew felt like she could really understand Vivian's journey. Despite Drew's undeniable talent and determination, she was deemed too young to play the part of a seasoned service lady. Number 30. Movie Director in a Mask Did you know Alfred Hitchcock used to pop up in his own movies for those sneaky little cameos? Well, Gary Marshall decided he wanted in on the action, too. In that scene where Edward's all lost and confused, Gary Marshall makes an appearance. The poor fellow Edward bumps into? That's Gary playing his very own cameo role. Number 29. A-List Writers When the producers decided to bring Gary Marshall on board as the director of Pretty Woman, they knew they had a gem on their hands. But they also understood the importance of nailing the story down to a T. That's where the dream team of writers came into play. Robert Garland, Stephen Matafe, and Barbara Benedict, the creative minds behind the main storyline worked together, and they crafted the blueprint that would set the stage for Pretty Woman to Shine. Once the foundation was laid, additional writers were brought in to sprinkle their magic on specific scenes, ensuring every moment was polished to perfection. Number 28. Drops on set. When it comes to filming, time is of the essence, and the cast and crew work tirelessly to bring the movie to life. But amidst the chaos, one star found herself in a tough spot. Julia Roberts, with the hectic schedule leaving little time for breaks, was surviving on just one avocado a day. But as the days wore on, her body couldn't keep up, and she ended up feeling faint and unwell, collapsing on set. Gary Marshall, without skipping a beat, cracks open a can of tuna and feeds Julia right then and there. Now that's called directorial dedication. Number 27, nine times perfect. The crew gearing up for the climactic final scene on the fire escape. What a saga it turned out to be. Not once, but a whopping nine times they had to film that scene. Every time they thought they had it in the bag, something would go awry. Julia's shoes would slip off, Richard Gere's dashing suit would end up a mess from all those stairs. Talk about a fashion faux pas. But just when they thought they had conquered all obstacles, a new challenge emerged. Cue the opera music blasting from a nearby house, setting the scene for chaos. And as if that weren't enough, pigeons decided to crash the party, fluttering about and stealing the spotlight. Number 26, Monk Sparks Interest. After Pretty Woman, naturally, talk of a follow-up had fans buzzing with excitement, but Richard Gere wasn't so sure. Gere had his doubts about whether they could recapture the magic that made the original so special. Richard Gere, deep in the heart of Tibet, finds himself in a cave, conversing with a wise old monk who asked when they were going to make Pretty Woman 2. And just like that, inspiration strikes. Runaway Bride is born a spiritual successor to the beloved classic, filled with romance, laughter, and the timeless charm that made Pretty Woman a legend. Number 25. Experiencing the movie when Pretty Woman hit the big screens. It didn't just capture hearts, it sparked a worldwide frenzy. Fans from every corner of the globe flocked to Beverly Hills, eager to soak in the glitz and glamour of their favorite movie. And Beverly Hills delivered. They rolled out the red carpet with a Pretty Woman VIP tour of Rodeo Drive, where fans could stroll down the same streets as Vivian and Edward. But that's not all. There were pampering sessions fit for royalty with massages in the spa to make you feel like a million bucks. And let's not forget the Piste de Resistance, a dazzling fashion show at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel showcasing some of the iconic outfits from the movie. It was a chance for die-hard fans to get up close and personal with the glitz and glam that made Pretty Woman a sensation. So grab your shopping bags and get ready to live out your Pretty Woman dreams in the heart of Beverly Hills. Number 24. Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Wise Investment. Talk about a sweet deal for the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. When it came to filming Pretty Woman, they were the only ones who opened their doors to the movie crew, giving them exclusive access to their lavish interiors. Not only did they provide the backdrop for some iconic scenes, but they also had the right to cash in on the movie's success. You see, other locations demanded big bucks for the privilege of being featured in the film, but that just wasn't in the budget. 
It seems they didn't realize the golden opportunity they were missing out on, a chance for free advertising and a spot in cinematic history. Number 23, Fine Dinning. When it came to filming this cinematic gem, Pretty Woman, the creators had one mission, authenticity. No fancy studio sets, they opted to shoot on location, capturing the vibrant pulse of Los Angeles in all its glory. One standout spot? The iconic diner nestled in the heart of the city, known as Cicada in real life but transformed into Voltaire for the movie. It's the kind of place where you can almost taste the nostalgia, with its retro vibes and bustling atmosphere. And guess what? Cicada Voltaire isn't just a one-hit wonder. It's played a starring role in other Hollywood blockbusters like Bruce Almighty, an indecent proposal, adding to its cinematic allure. So next time you're in LA, why not swing by? You might just feel like you've stepped straight into the silver screen. Number 22, Flying Snails. The unforgettable dinner scene in Pretty Woman, where Vivian takes a leap of faith and tries escargot for the first time. Instead of savoring the delicacy, she takes matters into her own hands and sends the snail flying across the room right into the unsuspecting waiter's grasp. But here's where it gets even more deliciously intriguing. Fast forward to 2001, and Gary Marshall, the mastermind behind Pretty Woman, is at it again, this time directing The Princess Diaries. Inspired by that iconic snail-slinging moment, he imagines a scene where Princess Mia, in all her royal awkwardness, pulls a similar stunt with a snail, much to the waiter's surprise. The waiter shrugs it off with a knowing smile and a familiar line. After all, some things like flying snails are just too good not to revisit. Number 21, Southern Bell Rocks, her script. When it came to casting Vivian, Gary Marshall decided that Vivian should hail from the same place as Julia Roberts herself, Georgia. By making Vivian a Georgia gal like Julia, Gary ensured that Julia could use her natural Southern charm and speech in the movie. No need for fancy dialect coaches or worrying about slipping out of character. Julia could just be herself, and it would fit perfectly with Vivian's character. Gary's attention to detail and his knack for bringing out the best in his actors is just brilliant. And when you've got a talent like Julia Roberts in your corner, why not let her shine in her own natural element? Number 20, Ralph's Last Part. Ralph Bellamy, the esteemed actor whose talent graced the silver screen for over six decades, left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Pretty Woman holds a special place in his legacy as it was his final film before he bid farewell to this world in November 1991 at the age of 87. Bellamy's illustrious career spanned both stage and screen, earning him accolades including Academy Award and Emmy nominations. His contributions to the arts touched the hearts of audiences far and wide, and his presence in Pretty Woman remains a poignant reminder of his enduring legacy. And let's not forget the iconic song that shares the movie's name a melody that holds a special significance for Bellamy's fans, serving as a cherished memory of his remarkable career. Number 19, Pretty Woman Unending Connection. Before Julia Roberts and Richard Gere reunited for Runaway Bride, they shared the silver screen in the iconic Pretty Woman, but that's not where the star-studded connections end. Julia, alongside Hank Azaria and Larry Hankin, found themselves invited to the ultimate guest-starring gig, Friends, the beloved sitcom that captured hearts around the world. And what a treat it was for fans of Pretty Woman to see their favorite characters grace the small screen together. Each actor brought their own unique flair to the show, slipping seamlessly into different roles and adding a dash of star power to the already stellar cast of Friends. It was a crossover event that had fans buzzing with excitement, blending the worlds of romantic comedy and sitcom in a way that only Hollywood can. Number 18, Hank Azaria debut. Hank Azaria, the man of many talents. You might recognize him as the quirky Dr. David, Phoebe's lovable boyfriend on Friends. But did you know that his first movie role with speaking lines was none other than Pretty Woman? Before he stole our hearts as Dr. David, Hank graced the big screen as a police officer in the opening scenes of Pretty Woman. Number 17, Pretty Woman fans. Pretty Woman is a timeless sensation that continues to capture hearts around the globe. 
Britney Spears, the pop princess herself, declared Pretty Woman as one of her all-time favorite flicks. She's not shy about admitting that she's watched it more times than she can count, soaking in every moment of that magical love story. But she's not alone in her admiration. Miranda Cosgrove, the teen sensation known for her roles in hit shows like iCarly, shares Britney's love for those classic movies. There's just something about the timeless charm of Pretty Woman and other old classics that keeps drawing them back for more. Number 16. Moonlit Shakespearean Romance In a moonlit park, Edward holds Vivian's hand and recites Shakespeare, enveloping them in romance. Vivian, accustomed to life's hardships, finds solace in this dreamlike moment. For Edward, it's a chance to connect deeply. Together, they create pure magic, proving love's power and Shakespeare's timelessness. This scene reminds us that simple gestures can be the most romantic. Number 15. Spanish Fever When it comes to romance, Spanish fans can't get enough of Vivian and Edward's whirlwind love story. In fact, Pretty Woman became more than just a movie. It became a cultural phenomenon in Spain. Believe it or not, Pretty Woman was shown a whopping 19 times in Spain, making it the most popular movie ever to grace Spanish screens. With its enchanting tale of love conquering all, it's no wonder Spanish audiences couldn't get enough. Number 14. Who Gets Vivian? Imagine a world where Vivian, the iconic character from Pretty Woman, could have been played by someone other than Julia Roberts. It's hard to believe, right? Before Julia stepped into those unforgettable heels, there were a few other leading ladies vying for the role. From rom-com queen Meg Ryan to pop sensation Madonna, and even the fabulous Sarah Jessica Parker, the list of contenders was as star-studded as they come. But when it came down to it, there was one actress who stood head and shoulders above the rest, Julia Roberts. It was clear to producers and fans alike that Julia was the best of the best. With her infectious smile, undeniable charm and innate ability to capture hearts on screen, she was the perfect fit for the role of Vivian. And as history would have it, her portrayal of the spirited, street-smart Vivian became nothing short of iconic, cementing her status as Hollywood royalty. Number 13. Nudity on Set The making of Pretty Woman was just as much of a riot as watching it on screen. With jokes flying left and right, laughter echoing through the set, and everyone getting in on the fun. But the real showstopper? It's got to be the hilarious moment when Richard Gere decided to go the extra mile to lend a helping hand to Julia Roberts. In a scene where Julia is nearly bearing it all, Richard, ever the gentleman, decides to strip down to his birthday suit and join her on set. Now that's what we call teamwork. While Julia was bravely bearing it all for the camera, Richard, the consummate professional, decided to stay holed up in his room. Number 12. Roy Orbison's Song in 1964, Roy Orbison's song, Pretty Woman, was a huge hit, but when it was featured in the movie with the same name, its popularity skyrocketed even more. The movie's title being the same as the song surely boosted its success. The music from the film became a massive hit, selling three million copies, which is called Going Triple Platinum. Songs like It Must Have Been Love also did really well, staying on the Billboard charts for a long time. Number 11. 250,000 Red Jewels with Armed Guard Director Gary Marshall had a vision for the movie Pretty Woman. He wanted everything to be stunning, especially the red dress and jewelry. The necklace in the film was supposed to look incredibly real, so they used genuine diamonds and rubies worth a whopping $250,000. A famous jewelry shop lent them the necklace but they were so concerned about its safety that they sent a guard to watch over it during filming. Number 10. Pretty Woman Makes It to Broadway Fans of Pretty Woman were thrilled when they heard the news in 2017 that the beloved movie would be transformed into a Broadway musical in the fall of 2018. The songs for the musical were crafted by screenwriter J.F. Lawton and director Gary Marshall who worked hard to keep the essence of the movie alive in the musical. Number 9. Low-Budget Dark Scenes During the making of Pretty Woman, the movie crew faced a budget crunch and had to get creative. In several scenes, they had to rely on street lights instead of expensive studio lights. Director Gary Marshall joked that it made the scenes a bit shadier. 
Despite the tight budget, they had to work fast. But all the hard work paid off, especially for Disney Studios, as the movie became a huge success. Number 8. Pretty Woman Misses Her Line In one of the early scenes of Pretty Woman, there was a small mix-up with the lines. Originally, Robert was supposed to say, yeah, I'm gonna grab a cab with my 20 bucks. However, there was a mistake, and instead she said, yeah, I'm going to grab a crab with my 20 bucks. Gear, confused but quick-witted, replied, yeah, there are a lot of crabs out there. It's funny how mistakes can sometimes turn into memorable moments. Number 7. Strict Rodeo Drive Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills is a glamorous spot, but filming there comes with strict rules. To capture the essence of luxury, all scenes set on Rodeo Drive for Pretty Woman had to be filmed on Sundays. It seems the high-end shops lining the street prefer to keep their weekdays free from the bustle of filming, preserving their upscale ambiance for shoppers. Number 6. Marshall's Son Saves Polo The golf match scene in Pretty Woman was actually filmed at the LA Horseback Riding Center. Interestingly, Gary Marshall, the director, wasn't very familiar with horses, so he had his son Scott film those scenes. It just goes to show that sometimes filmmaking requires a bit of unexpected expertise. Number 5. Cicada Scenes The famous snail scene in Pretty Woman was filmed at a place called The Rex, which is now known as Cicada. Interestingly, the dinner scene from Mr. and Mrs. Smith was also filmed at the same location. With the film's budget seemingly endless, Gary Marshall had the luxury of choosing any location he wanted, adding to the movie's allure and charm. Number 4. Los Palos Hotel In Pretty Woman, Vivian lives in a room at the Los Palos Hotel. In real life, this hotel is located in the city of LA and is still open for business today. It's interesting to think that you could visit the same hotel where Vivian stayed in the movie. Number 3. Edward Rekindles Old Flame In a poignant moment in Pretty Woman, we witness Edward engaged in a phone conversation with a woman who, as it later unfolds, is his ex-wife. This scene peels back the layers of his seemingly perfect life, revealing a man who, despite his wealth and success, craves the warmth and intimacy of a loving relationship. A touching reminder that at our core we all yearn for genuine connection and love, no matter our outward circumstances. Number 2. Gary's Daughter at the Front Desk Kevin Gary Marshall's daughter made a delightful appearance as the front desk clerk of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel in Pretty Woman. This wasn't her first rodeo, she's a seasoned actor in her dad's films, having graced the screen in hits like New Year's Eve, The Princess Diaries, Valentine's Day, and more. Her presence adds a touch of family charm to her father's cinematic creations. Number 1. Julia Prepares for Every Role Julia Roberts went to great lengths to prepare for her role as Vivian in Pretty Woman. Gary Marshall's wife, who worked in L.A., provided valuable insight. To truly embody Vivian, Roberts visited a free clinic to learn how to speak and behave authentically, adding depth and authenticity to her character. Thanks for watching. Check out another interesting video by clicking on the link appearing on your screen right now. See you in a minute.